congratulations. Incredible win. As I overheard, you said Dana wasn't there, but Frankie Edgar and Matt Sarri was there. How does it feel? Uh, it feels it feels great. Yeah, a little surreal. Um, I was uh, honestly, I was hoping. I really thought Buddy would put up more of a fight. To be perfectly honest, you know, I've seen uh, a few of his fights, and he's a gamer. So you know, I was I was a little surprised, but I could see a look in his eye, like right off the hop, and uh, he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> so. Uh, I made I made one mistake. I got caught with a right hand. I was like, oh, "Fuck this guy!" And then, yeah, I went for it. <laughs> now, if there's anything that you could change from that performance, what could you have changed? So I was throw. I was trying to catch his calf off the, the hop. He was really good at pulling it back. I didn't set it up. You know, like fucking coach always yells at me, "Set it up before you throw the kick." And, you know, I was just finding so much success just easily kicking with the body. You know, without setting it up. That I figured you know, to get that leg of his those little skinny calves. I wanted to break them. But uh, it didn't happen. Now I gotta say, now your boxing obviously showed there. Steve Bailey, one of the best to do it. Now, any credit to him for that right there? I have the best boxing coach, arguably in the world. Like, look at his stable. He has all world champions, right? Like, you know, you know the Irishman. You know, yes, you see him every day. Yes, sir. <laughs> and actually, that specific right hand, that specific way where I turned the knuckles down like that, that was him three weeks ago. And then in the dressing room, because this is the one I want to see tonight. This is the one. Wrap it around, it, wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around. That's right. As I say, he's the leader of the Avengers. <laughs> You're just he's, one of them. There honestly, you go. Honestly, yeah. He, there's, he has so many world champions. Um, low on the total pole for his guys, you know? Exactly. And what's next for you? Contract, perhaps? Let's say yes, hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. Obviously, I hope uh, I can get a contract here. Um, if, they, if, uh, if that was enough, you know, I hope it's enough. If it's not, I'll... Knock somebody else out of stiff. Sure. Congrats. You mentioned going into this fight that things weren't ideal. Uh, can you talk a bit more about that? I mean, you won, so obviously you can kind of go back and talk about how you know things weren't 100% for you. Um, well, no, that was um, the guy who was questioning me. He knows a little bit about my story, my life. That's mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what he meant. Oh, okay, gotcha. You made that comment. No, my, my camp was perfect. That was good. Yeah. And you yeah. said a lot of cross-training for this camp, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Honestly, one of the biggest additions I did was I surrounded myself um, with Crew LN in Stony Creek, and I re religiously trained with Mike Malott, you know, and uh, some of that uh, greatness of his was rubbing off on me tonight. Yeah. How, how did it feel, though? Because obviously we've got the 297 card tomorrow. Uh, Malott's getting ready for his fight. Like, did that sort of feed off on you and camp just going into this big opportunity here? Yeah, big time, right? Um, I, like I, I told the girl over there, um, uh, Ryan... Anger. He was training with Neil Magny this whole yep. camp, and I was training with him a lot this whole camp. And yeah. like, yeah, you know, the job's gonna be done when Mike knocks him, Neil out stiff, just like I did. Yeah. Once that's done, you know, this weekend will be perfect. You had a bit of a layoff going into the fight. It didn't seem like it mattered. Like I said, you got a quick finish there. But how did you feel after being out for so long? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in like ring rust or nothing like that, right? Yeah. I, mean, I know people always say, oh, you lay off and this and that. It's all, it's all horse shit, man. We're in the gym, yeah. we're sparring all the time. You know the. Yeah, I, I've never had an issue with that, mm -hmm. you know, I, maybe some guys do, but yeah, for me personally, you know, I got married, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Not going to look good in the wedding photos. Yeah, you know, and, and I was supposed to fight in October, yeah. and then we were trying for November, and so, like, I've honestly been in camp since August, so I was just ready, like, I was like a, like a gun in a, uh, bullet in a gun, ready to fire, you know, yeah. like, I was, like, fully committed to go, you know, yeah. so... I finally got to uh, release. <laughs> yeah, and where does this win rank in terms of career moments? You've had a lot of good fights, but to do it on this, you know, really big fight week, Dana White's in attendance, like that, that's got to be right up there for you. Yeah, well, because Dana White was here. That's yeah. the only. That's the only thing. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that was my. That wasn't even a really hard fight for me. You know, mm -hmm. I I thought he would be better. You know, but uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. How are you celebrating tonight? With my wife. <laughs> nice. Pat, what does it mean to you to get a win like this in front of Dana White, but not only like for yourself, but represent, you know, you're from Kitchener and really put like MMA on a, a big stage for the people in Kitchener, Ontario? Oh man, it means everything. It means everything to me. Um, yeah, and, and you know, they're, they're playing, uh, I'm just doing a, a charity, um, they're playing my fight at St. Louis in Waterloo, right? Yes, and uh, the owner's like, you know what, I'm going to donate portions of the first but for all the people that are going to come to help some kid get into martial arts like my friend has a, a program for kids whose parents that can't afford to you know, get kids into martial arts at like a, a young age you know because I know it made a quite an impact on me 
I was a young trouble kid, so uh, yeah, it's going to change somebody else's life. Now, obviously, the goal of tonight is to get a contract, but if you don't, would you like to fight for the welterweight title for you to fight in Kitchener? Uh, yeah, well, so I won the welterweight title, and the one that I, the title that I lost is actually at 165. Yeah. And yeah, we can go into that, but I, I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I fought stupidly with injury, but you know, it didn't matter. It's not why I lost. I lost because I made a mistake. But um, um, yeah, so they, Unified doesn't have the 170 anymore. They have 165 or 175. And I was going to challenge Faye Bursal, but I never actually wanted to win the 175 title. I just want to kick that guy's ass because he beat up Ryan Ford, who's like, Say what you want about the guy, but Ryan Ford is like a legend. He is a legend. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he didn't deserve to go out like that. So the second that fight happened, I was like, I'm going to get that guy. And that guy knew I was going to get him. And then he pulled out of the fight the week before the fight. So am I holding this fucking thing right? Yes, yeah, you're, you're doing a fantastic <laughs> job. <laughs> you're doing a fantastic job. And as well, obviously, you know, you're kind of the guy Dana White's looking for. Nine and one now, nine KOs of those nine wins. I mean, do you think that's this is enough to actually get you that contract here, Pat? I hope so. But um, if not, you know, I can fight somebody else and do it again. And as well, how's married life kind of changed your fighting career? Uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's hard, right? Because you know, I have to focus completely when I have a fight coming on. Uh, you know, it's hard. You know, you got to be a little bit selfish. It's a selfish sport. But uh, you know, my wife's a fighter too. So she understands better than most, but at the end of the day, she's still a woman. So, you know, who's that? <laughs> well, congratulations, Pat. Way to put MMA in the realm for Kitchener. Awesome. Thank you so much. How's this fight going, by the way? Um, I think it's right now on Mark. Shit. So, there's a couple from me over here, Pat. Yeah. Because when we were talking ahead of your Michael Hill fight, there was around like a four year, some odd hiatus from MMA. But yeah. within that, you were talking about just how much you were able to recuperate injuries and yeah. stuff like that. You, in a, in a cursory, we mentioned the Lindsay fight and the injury. Like, how are you feeling now? Just with like, I imagine a new lease on your career and just like the lack of injuries out there. Yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm healed up. I'm 100%. Um, it, it was the injury and then COVID hit. And then it was opportunity. I just didn't have the opportunity. I wasn't getting the opportunities. I was back in the gym, and I wasn't able to get, you know, I wasn't able to get get fights. But what I did get was I got the chance to work on all my skill sets and um, improve. So, yeah, that's what yeah. I did. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, I've been watching you fight with Unified for a while now, like, just with like the Yannick Tare fight and stuff like that. It seems like you've grown tremendously as Unified has also grown tremendously. Can you speak about what your individual journey has been like with the growth as much as Unified has also grown? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've grown as a, obviously I've grown as a man and a character and, you know, being a professional, right? So, um, Sorry, what was the, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was just speaking about the growth of Unified. You've obviously grown as yeah. a fighter. It seems like both are happening concurrently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There used to be some some shady dudes on those cards, man. I <laughs> when I fucking oh, I'm sorry. Um, when I first started um, MMA, I, I was I was actually not uh, accident. I um, I was looking for a Muay Thai kickboxing gym just to stay fit, and uh, I walked into Hayabusa and they were sparring that day, and. Uh, Looks like you ever fight before? I'm like, yeah, quite a bit actually. <laughs> He's like, in what? I'm like, Muay Thai, kickboxing, K1 rules, low kick, all kinds of shit. He's like, okay, well, with the first couple of rounds, we're gonna start standing. So I was like, all right. And then I was going through his guys, and I'm like, what the fuck? All these guys are professionals? And then he's like, now we're going to start standing with takedowns. And then everybody beat the shit out of me. <laughs> like, like, I don't know anything. I'm not tough. I can't protect myself. I'll fucking wimp. I'm like, I got to learn this. And then after, uh, you know, with my head between my knees, looks like you want a job. So I took the job. I made him get me a fight three months later. And the point of the story was when I first saw Unified MMA, the skill level wasn't there. But now the skill level is crazy. Everybody on that card is a killer. I don't know if you saw it, but knockout, submission, knockout, submission. Like everybody's getting killed today. You know, there's a, the first couple fights maybe not so not so much. You know, there's, you can see a little bit still of growth, I think. But uh, yeah, the rest of them have been solid. At least I think. You know, I didn't see any of it, but I heard people get knocked the fuck out. <laughs>
There are a couple 30 second finishes yeah. here today. Yeah. Yeah, and some subs real quick, like that uh, Imperato. Imperato, yeah. Imperato, that guy's a stud. That guy might get the contract. <laughs> Let's just say yours was the knockout of the night. Mm. <laughs> Mine's always the knockout of the night. <laughs> but yeah, I, like, you know, I don't, it's going to sound stupid, but I don't actually enjoy hurting people. But when I get in there, it's like, I'm going to hurt you. You know, I'm going to kill you before you kill me. Like, I don't look at this as just like, let's play MMA and let's point, do some point sparring and, and see how it fucking goes. And I'm going to be on the back foot so I don't get hit because I'm afraid to get hit. No, I'm going to fucking come forward. You're going to kill me or I'm going to kill you. But you better kill me because I'm coming heavy. Right? So, yeah, I do that every time. Congratulations. Huge win. Thank you, guys.